Hey folks, 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 Kevin here in Japan, in Kobe, Japan, coming to you with another video here on the Busan Kevin channel. I want to get kind of back to the roots of making some informational videos. Not highly shiny, not shiny, not polished, not well produced, but with content. And one question that, and that's because I don't have time to shine things. Um, one thing that a lot of people ask, I still get this question after many, many years of living abroad. Do I sometimes get homesick? So what I wanted to talk about was beating homesick, combating homesickness, fighting homesickness. It is something that happens to everybody. And there are some people who say that they never get homesickness, but I think that's a little bit weird. I've also met a few people who say that they never miss their own country. I think the people, and, and, and those people who I've met who say that tend to have some kind of beef about where they're from. So they've got some kind of baggage or issues about where they come from or something that happened in the past. But it's pretty safe to say that pretty much everyone gets homesick at one time or another, depending on how long you've been abroad. I still get homesickness, but it's much easier to deal with now in 2016 here in Japan than it was a long time ago. Like when I came to, to Asia originally in 2002, I, got, I would get quite homesick, mostly because of the fact that my family lived really far away. It was my first time being abroad. And I am... Um, yeah, I, I mean, it was it was just, it was pretty rough. I mean, where I lived in Korea, there weren't a lot of foreigners around. Um, you know, I didn't have internet connection at my house. I couldn't email people from work. Um, I, it was really hard to get, like, comfort food, food from home. Um, very limited entertainment. What I would do to kind of, to try to beat homesickness is I would, uh, there was a video shop near my place and I had a VCR and I'd rent VHS tapes of lots of movies and watch lots of movies and stay at home. Occasionally, my friends and I would head into Seoul and there was a foreign food shop. It was very expensive and we'd get some food occasionally. Or we'd go into Seoul and go to like an American style bar, bar and grill or a pub and enjoy the drinks and food there. That's how I combated homesickness. And I'd call my mom and dad every once in a while, I'd get an international phone card and call my parents. Um, now, 2016, it's quite easy. I mean, in my backpack right now, I've got some some Coronas because my wife wanted me to make tacos tonight. So at our local supermarket, I picked up uh, just an old El Paso taco kit. There you go. And she wanted, we found a lime, kind of they had lime, not so common. And my wife wanted Coronas. They only had one though. So I got on my bicycle and I went to another part of town, got some more Coronas. And uh, yeah, so I can do that now. I mean, there's a lot of import shops here in Kobe. There's a lot of import shops where you can buy tons of stuff. Like Amazon is a big way of buying tons of foreign things. Um, you buy lots of stuff from Amazon. There's Costco around here. I don't have a Costco membership, but I have friends who do, and they're kind enough to sometimes pick me up things when we need them. As far as entertainment goes, obviously, the internet's far more developed than it was, you know, uh, 14 years ago when I first came to Asia. So on YouTube, lots of entertainment. Recently got Netflix, very happy about Netflix, making me happy watching House of Cards season one, really enjoying that, watching Daredevil, really enjoying that. The kids are loving watching a lot of American and foreign TV shows. It's great, and so I find it, it's not hard. Um, I Skype my parents all the time, whenever I want to Skype, when I talk to people, I Skype them from my phone, from my iPhone, from the computers. My kids get to talk to my parents every week on Skype. Um, you know, I get to show my parents, give them a tour of our, our balcony garden every weekend. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy to combat homesickness, I would say. Um, if, if foreign food you miss, there's tons of restaurants in a place like this anyway. Now, it might be a bit more challenging if you're living in the Inaka or a more rural area where that you wouldn't have the variety, but if you're in a big city like Tokyo or Nagoya or Osaka or Kobe or Fukuoka, they're pretty, you'd be surprised at how international they can be. A lot of international cuisine and stuff. Um, yeah, so there we go. Those are some things I do to combat homesickness and things you can do as well. So that's it for me, Kevin, here in Japan. Oh, also one thing I'd like to add is that if you do have hobbies um, where you're from, continue doing those hobbies here, where it be running or like crocheting or making jewelry or skateboarding. Do those things here. Do those things here. Um, it'll make your time in Japan more cool. And look, there's a train. There's a train. There's a train. There's a port liner. All right, guys, check out all the links below. Like the video if you found it useful. Um, go listen to my podcast, the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. All the links are below. Follow me on Twitter and all that stuff. Facebook, all that jazz. Links are below. All right, guys. Talk to you later.